Good evening, and welcome to Weekly Update. Filling in for D. David McDougall, I'm your host, Mike Schneider. Due to the recent national political conventions in the United States, our regularly scheduled program was preempted these past two weeks. However, in tonight's coverage, we have breaking news, commentary, and exclusive footage featuring not only the Commander-in-Chief himself, President Donald J. Trump, but also various Democrats and Republicans on the forefront of the upcoming U.S. November election. We welcome back acclaimed author, political analyst, and psychiatrist Ernst J. Freud, who had the distinction of covering both the Democratic and Republican conventions. Dr. Freud? Thank you, Mike, and I must say it is quite an honor to be here with all of you this evening. I had the good fortune to interview several political heavyweights over the last two weeks during the course of the Democratic and Republican National Conventions. In this week's segment, we begin with the Democrats to find out their take on President Trump and the current state of affairs in America. Mike, roll the tape from the last interview. Now then, in the great tradition of Paris' burning, the library is now open. Because reading is what? Fundamental. I've been told you love to read, people. Uh, I read a lot. I think that you, more than any other president in history, has developed quite a collection of reads. Why there's the uh, Wild Bill and Crooked Hillary, Sleepy Joe, Crazy Bernie, Nervous Nancy, Little Rocket Man, Tim Apple, and even your running mate Mike Pounce. As you can plainly see, President Trump has invented some disparaging nicknames for the Democrats. We will now hear from some of those mentioned in response. We begin with Mike Bloomberg. Mr. Bloomberg, what is your assessment of President Trump's handling of the coronavirus pandemic? When confronted with the biggest calamity any president has faced in the modern era, Donald Trump spent the year downplaying the threat, ignoring science, and recommending quack cures, which let COVID-19 spread much faster than it should have, leaving hundreds of thousands needlessly sick or dead. He has failed the American people catastrophically. Thank you, Mr. Bloomberg. Senator Vaughan, as a former educator, how would you assess Donald Trump's leadership style and evaluate his track record as president? Donald Trump's ignorance and incompetence have always been a danger to our country. COVID-19 was Trump's biggest test. He failed miserably. Today, America has the most COVID deaths in the world and an economic collapse. This crisis is bad, and it didn't have to be this way. This crisis is on Donald Trump and the Republicans who enable him. Oh, thank you, Senator Warren. Senator Sanders, how would you characterize Trump's America? We're facing the worst public health crisis in 100 years and the worst economic collapse since the Great Depression. We are confronting systemic racism and the enormous threat to our planet of climate change. And in the midst of all of this, we have a president who is not only incapable of addressing these crises, but is leading us down the path of authoritarianism. Authoritarianism is quite a strong term, Mr. Sanders. In all of history, with whom would you compare Donald Trump as a leader? He has tried to prevent people from voting, undermined the U.S. Postal Service, deployed the military and federal agents against peaceful protesters, threatened to delay the election, and suggested that he will not leave office if he loses. Nero fiddled while Rome burned. Trump golfs. His actions fanned this pandemic, resulting in over 170,000 deaths and a nation still unprepared to protect its people. Well, thank you, Mr. Sanders. Madam Speaker, you are an advocate for women's rights here in America. How does President Trump measure up in his stance on women and families? 
As Speaker of the House, I've been, I've seen firsthand Donald Trump's disrespect for facts, for working families, and for women in particular. Disrespect written into his policies toward our health and our rights, not just his conduct. But we know what he doesn't, that when women succeed, America succeeds. Thank you, Speaker Pelosi. President Clinton, the coronavirus pandemic has rocked the US and the world for the past seven months. In your estimation, how would you rate President Trump's handling of the situation? At first, he said the virus was under control. It's under control. And would soon disappear. When it didn't, he was on TV every day bragging on what a great job he was doing, while our scientists waited to give us vital information. When he didn't like the expert advice he was given, he ignored it. Only when COVID exploded in even more states did he encourage people to wear masks. By then, many more were dying. When asked about the surge in deaths, he shrugged and said, it is what it is. It is what it is. But did it have to be this way? No. COVID hit us much harder than it had to. We have just 4% of the world's population, but 25% of the world's COVID cases. I see. Uh, ultimately, who is responsible for the health and welfare of the United States? The Oval Office should be a command center. Instead, it's a storm center. There's only chaos. Just one thing never changes. His determination to deny responsibility and shift the blame. The buck never stops there. If you want a president who defines the job as spending hours a day watching TV and zapping people on social media, he's your man. Denying, distracting, and demeaning works great if you're trying to entertain or inflame. But in a real crisis, it collapses like a house of cards. If you were to characterize the Trump administration in these last few years in just three words, what would they be? You know what Donald Trump will do with four more years. Blame, bully, and belittle. Thank you, President Clinton. Mrs. Clinton, if there were one thing you would wish for here in America today, what would that be? I wish Donald Trump knew how to be a president because America needs a president right now. I see. Thank you, Mrs. Clinton. Governor Cuomo, to what would you attribute the current divide here in the U.S.? Donald Trump didn't create the initial division. The division created Trump. He only made it worse. Oh, thank you, Governor Cuomo.